Jess, can we please take a break? Hmm. Fifteen minutes, okay? I'll go grab some Oreos. Our, Our favorite! favorite! Ugh. I hate chemistry. And it doesn't like me either. The only thing I know is that cafe has two chemical elements in it. Calcium and iron. <laughs> My parents are freaking out that I'll fail it. I don't know why. I mean, it's not like I want to be a scientist or anything. Anyway, they asked Jesse to tutor me. Currently, my grade's still lingering around the F mark. But there's no way I'm finding a new tutor. Why, you ask? Well, because Jess and I are the perfect match. We're both addicted to online shopping and love to read about the latest scandals to hit social media. And that quickly turned us into best friends. And this is my ABCDEFGH boyfriend, Bryce, which means attractive, brilliant, cute, darling, elegant, funny, gorgeous, and hot. I lab him. So you're probably wondering how I met such an awesome college boy. Well, it's all thanks to Jess, really. As turns out, she's one heck of a wing woman. So one time during the break, Jess was looking up her college forums when I spotted Bryce in one post. Wow, that's a hottie! You know him, Jess? I pointed at the post. She then replied, He's so your type, right? That's Bryce. I heard he's still single. Go for it. I'll get your back. Oh, that sounds interesting. I grinned back. After that, Jessie went into full-on detective mode. After only 10 minutes, She'd found what block he lived on, what he's majoring in, and even the name of his pet dog. And since then, she instructed me on how to text, reply to, and flirt with him. Cool, calm, and collected. It worked a treat, as by the end of the week, he'd asked me out on a date, and now he's my dreamy BF. He might look like the bad boy type, but underneath it all, he's sweet and shy. Just like Edward Cullen. Aww. And guess what? We've been together for two months, and, um, we haven't kissed yet. But, so, how's it going with you and that hot college boy of yours? <sighs> I don't know. It's just recently, I feel like he's being cold with me. Just, I know he's read my messages, but he still takes ages to reply. And he never texts me goodnight anymore. Not like before. I'm trying. I mean... He seems happy with the pair of Jordan 4s and the new phone I bought him, but... <sighs> I'm not sure if he wants to be with me anymore. Of course he does, girl. You're a catch. He's probably just busy with his studies. I'm afraid he's... cheating on me. You know, there's this Sally girl in Bryce's class. I often see that chick following him around, acting all friendly and making excuses to ask him to do stuff for her. Ugh! Don't be silly. I bet they're just friends. This girl needed to watch out, as I wasn't going to let her just waltz in and steal my man. I slammed on the table. Seeing how frazzled I was, Jessie made a suggestion. We would take it in turns to follow Bryce wherever he went and find out exactly what he was up to. A few days later, I overheard Bryce on his phone talking about his study group at his house. Annoying Sally would be there too, of course. So, being the bright spark I am, I paid the pizza delivery guy to attach a micro microphone inside the pizza to spy on him. But, ugh, the only thing I heard was Bryce's hungry stomach. Yuck. Another time, Jesse texted me. Urgent. Saw Bryce in a jewelry shop buying an expensive necklace. Must be for Sally. Sorry. Fuming, I power walked the 20 blocks to his house. But his mom answered the door and proudly showed off the sparkly necklace Bryce had bought her for her birthday. Oops. Then, on one of my days to follow him, I decided to go in disguise. Um, the problem being, it was 28 degrees, so my choice of Sherlock Holmes outfit and fake beard wasn't the best idea. I'd just followed him into a grocery store when the world began to black out and I tumbled straight into a display of cans. The last thing I saw was a group of people leaning over me, including a confused-looking Bryce. Babe, you're awake, but why the freaky costume? I sighed, 
then replied, I'm sorry, it's just you've been so distant recently. Don't you like me anymore? He chuckled. Maddie, of course. I'm just busy with my graduation thesis. You know, I'm in my final year. Aha! So we were all good! Yay! So the next day, I bought us a set of those seriously cute couples rings from Tiffany & Co. to mark this. Peace was restored. At least for a short time. Lately, whenever we went out on a date, Bryce didn't pay attention to my words anymore and just had his eyes glued to his phone screen. Oof! He even chuckled and had this suspect twinkle in his eyes. So I tried leaning over him to see what was so funny, but I couldn't see a thing, as his screen brightness was lowered to the minimum. What are you doing? I snatched his phone, but... What? Wrong password? I bought him this and set the password as our anniversary. Why won't you let me look at your phone? What are you hiding? Nothing, Mads. I just like my privacy sometimes, that's all. Now, come on, baby boo. I'll get you a chocolate muffin. There's no way I was turning that down. Especially as thinking about it, it's the only thing he'd ever bought for me. But as I nibbled on my muffin and watched him transfixed on his phone, I couldn't shake away the feeling that something was wrong. I couldn't drag Jessie into this mission, as her studies were occupying her attention at the moment. It's okay. I can solo it. And this time, I won't faint. I swear. I did my research and found the perfect spy software. I know. I don't normally condone this sort of behavior, but Bryce was hiding something, and I needed to find out what it was. The software was simple to use. I just had to find a way to install it on Bryce's phone. The app itself could be hidden, leaving me free to read his messages without him ever finding out. Perfect! Mission 1. How to install that software on Bryce's phone in a really short time? This is not an easy task, as Bryce is so obsessed with his phone, he even sleeps with it. On a few occasions, he does move away from it, but it's for a few minutes max, meaning I needed to move fast. It took me a whole day of practicing to beat the three-minute mark. I tried it over and over on four different phones and at different times of the day to make sure it'd work under any circumstance. By the end of it, I couldn't bend my fingers. Ouch! Mission one, done. Successfully trained even under time pressure. Mission number two, detect his passcode. I didn't know what his dumb passcode was only that it certainly wasn't our anniversary. We went to the cafe, and as usual, he was stuck on his phone. So I held up mine, pretended to be playing games, but actually turned on the camera, and started recording so I could track the position of his fingers later when typing the passcode. It took hours. Literally. Bryce eventually gave his phone a break to order some snacks. So after that, he had to unlock his phone again. Oof. Finally, after an hour-long video, I've gotten the footage I needed. Okay, Detective Maddie, ready, set, go. I rewatched the video and started analyzing it as soon as I got home. I stared at the screen with my eyes following Bryce's hand movements. He could be fast, but honey, your girl is already a step ahead. It didn't take long till I figured out the digits. Easy peasy. <laughs> Mission 3. Action. What better way than a lovely picnic to complete my quest? And as expected, Bryce just sat there, phone in hand, the whole time. Ugh. I wasn't even sure on how I could carry out this task anymore, but I told myself that the time would surely come. After a few hours, he was bored to death, and without even looking at me, he grumbled, Babe, let's just go home. I immediately shouted out, No! Not until I- Uh- I mean, it's so nice out here. I want to stay a little longer. You just take a nap. Fine. Wake me up when you're ready. I waited patiently for him to fall asleep. He was making these light snore sounds. Ugh, cute. I was so nervous. I bit down on my bottom lip as I gently pulled his phone out of his pocket. Then I turned my back to him and typed in the passcode with my shaky hands. And I was in. Yeah. 
I was so happy that I almost forgot and screamed. I did it all in record time. But he suddenly turned around. What you doing, Maddie? Can we go home now? He yawned. O-M-G. My heart stopped. Uh, oh, just a few more minutes. I'm editing the cute pics we took. Well, hurry up. Phew, that was a close one. I grabbed my phone to check if it worked, then... I turned on the silent mode ASAP, but it still woke him up the second time. As much as I wanted to snoop through his messages, I knew they'd have to wait, so we went home. Ugh! Talk about girl message overload. There were dozens, all of them craftily saved under names such as Monitor and Professor. He'd even used my pickup line on some of them. Are you made of copper and tellarium? Because you're cute. Ew! Then I suddenly spotted a familiar face. Jesse? What? My bestie was secretly dating my BF? My heart sunk. This sucked. It didn't make any sense. If Jesse liked Bryce from the start, then why had she encouraged me to flirt with him? Jeez, the messages between them went way back. Then I saw one that broke my heart all over again. Maddie's family is loaded. Baby, let's pretend to be her BF, and she'll buy you whatever you want. Just don't take it further. So that explained his shyness. Why he hardly looked at me, and why after two months of dating he hadn't tried to kiss me. Then, a recent message from Bryce to Jessie caught my eye. She's so boring. I got us enough money now, so gonna dump her next week. How dare they? Only, unbeknownst to Jesse, Bryce had dozens of girls on the go. Actually, he was meeting this girl called Tiffany at the movies tomorrow night. It was time to get revenge. So pretending to be Bryce, I texted all of the girls, including Jesse, to come to the cinema at 8 p.m. tomorrow. I borrowed my dad's baseball cap, wore my oversized sunglasses, and arrived there early, so I didn't miss the show. I even bought some popcorn and a Coke, as I wanted refreshments to watch this blockbuster. <laughs> then, at 8 p.m. sharp, Bryce strolled over, and boom! The girls arrived one by one, figured out what was going on, and started arguing with him and each other. Tiffany threw her popcorn over his head. Hilarious! And another girl called him a jerk and whacked him with her handbag, while the others were shouting and pulling his hair. And me? Well, I lurked, in the background, and secretly filmed it all. Oh, sweetheart, you're so dead! Wow, Jessie, our main character, has appeared. She took one look at the circus going on in front of her and instantly looked like a lion ready to pounce. She stormed up to Bryce, pinched his ears, and dragged him while in a high-pitched voice he said, Ouch! Ouch, Jess! It's you who taught me all of this. I'll call you later, babes. When these two almost passed me, I pulled off the cap and shades and jumped out at them. Voila! Could someone come and help me pick up their jaws from the floor? <laughs> Couldn't expect Maddie the mastermind, huh? I didn't stick around for their explanations. Instead, I shimmied off. But I did send her a little souvenir. Hmm... Jessie is my best friend, so I have to share anything interesting with her, right? Have a good night, my bestie, and my ABCDEFGH boyfriend, you too. But let me add the IJK. I'm just kidding. Yeah, as for me, I've decided to give my heart a break for a while, as this has taught me a priceless lesson. Don't be smitten with handsome boys. Oh, and be wary of sneaky so-called besties. Oops, still not it. Wow, why do they have an entire room just for shoes? That's mental. I muttered to myself as I closed the door. I swear, that was like the 20th door I'd opened. This place was insane. I had no idea which door would lead to my bedroom. To be honest, 
I've never been anywhere this lavish before in my entire life. Okay, it's now down to this door or that one over there. Wish me luck. But as I reached for the doorknob, I heard a voice. Hey, what prank you trying to pull on me again? I caught you red-handed this time, Gabby. Startled, I turned around and... Oh, wow. There was this super cute guy standing there, looking so smug with himself. So this must be Jaden, the annoying big brother that Gabby had told me about. Only he didn't seem annoying to me. But right, I needed to stay in character. So I replied, um, yeah, guess I was just too busy thinking about stuff that I didn't watch where I was going. Take it easy, bro. Then I immediately fled to the other room while Jaden watched me in confusion. Phew, that was a close one. And wow, was Gabby a princess or something? She lived in a literal palace. Look at her room. Oh, you must be wondering. Yes, I'm not Gabby. I'm Nancy. So how come Jaden didn't realize that I was not his sister? Now, let me tell you. That's one wild story. I was just a normal teenager, living my peaceful life in the Missouri countryside. My family doesn't have a lot of money, so I worked part-time in a nearby diner, so I could save up for college. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but I knew I was lucky to have my loving family. They're my everything. So, anyway, it wasn't uncommon for schools from St. Louis to arrange trips out here, to show the kids what country life was like. And on days like those, the diner could get pretty hectic, and today was no exception. By the time my shift finished, I was a tired, sweaty mess, so I took the scenic route home to unwind. That's when I heard this girl screaming for help. She must have slipped and fell into this ditch. I quickly found a big branch to help pull her out of there. Then she brushed the dirt off her as she said, Thanks. But as she looked up at me, OMG! We both jumped up in such a fright that we almost stumbled back into the ditch. She looked exactly like me. I pinched myself to check I wasn't hallucinating or something. I mean, I was super exhausted from work. We stared at each other gormlessly for a bit. Then she suddenly reached out her hand and slapped me. Ouch! I raised my eyebrows at her, and she just grinned back. Oops, sorry. Just checking this isn't a dream. That's when I saw it. Her bracelet. The pendant on it was a strange shape. A strange shape like mine. I held up my wrist to slot my bracelet's pendant into hers. And it formed a butterfly. What's more, carved on the back of it was our birthday. November 3rd. Oh my god. No wonder why. I always asked my parents why they bought me such an ugly bracelet. Turns out it was two halves of a hole? She shrieked. So, do you think we're... twins? I was still in shock, but I managed to mutter out, Must be. She excitedly clapped her hands together, then pulled me into a hug. She said her name was Gabby, and her field trip was so dull that she wandered off, then ended up lost and stuck. Then I told her about my loving family, and she told me about her city life. I thought her life sounded awesome, but she didn't think so. Nah, it's seriously so boring over there. I just want a happy, drama-free life like yours. It makes sense now. I see why my parents love my brother more than me. I'm obviously adopted. But hey, at least you have your friends and get to go to a good school. School? That's the worst part. I hate it. Then she paused and turned to me. Nancy, I have an amazing idea. How about we switch places? This was crazy. An hour ago, I thought I was an only child. And now I was staring at my twin. Gabby seemed adamant switching places was the best idea ever, as I'd get a taste of the city life while also helping her ace her upcoming exams. This did sound tempting. I mean, it wasn't every day your long-lost twin appeared and offered you the adventure of a lifetime, right? We didn't have much time to discuss it anymore, so we quickly switched clothes, phones, 
and further instructions about anything else would be discussed later over the phone. Then I showed her the way to my house, and I headed toward the crowd of noisy students lining up for the bus back to the city. Suddenly, a girl tapped me on the shoulder and in an annoyed tone said, Er, uh, where have you been? Blonde hair, a pink hairband, and wearing a choker with a heart pendant on it? Yep, this must be Katie, Gabby's best friend. I followed her onto the bus, then yawned and told her I was exhausted. I feigned sleeping for the duration of the journey back so she wouldn't start any more convos with me. So after that, things went by smoothly. Until I got home and didn't know where I normally sleep at. But it's okay now, as I'm safe in Gabby's bedroom. The butler did knock on the door to ask me to come down for dinner. I know, the fact they have a butler is crazy. But I just lied that I'd eaten loads on the field trip. There was no time for food now. I needed to learn as much as I could about these people. I searched her room and looked through her yearbooks, family photos, anything. I thought I was ready to go to school as Gabby tomorrow, but... Well, as if it was that simple. The next morning, I nervously came downstairs to go to school. And of course, I had to face the entire family now. Upon seeing me, the small talks all came flying at me. How was yesterday's trip, dear? I managed to mumble out, Um, it, it was all right. Then suddenly, a hand rubbed my hair. Hey, I'm taking your PB&J, okay? You won't eat it anyway. I turned to look and saw him grinning at me before he headed outside. Oh gosh, I thought I'd melted into a puddle. He's so cute. I just wanted to follow him, but then Dad cleared his throat. Gabriella, can we please make it a day free of complaints from your teachers? Oh God, Gabby, what had you possibly done? I gulped back, nodded in response, then hurried out of there. I awkwardly lingered in front of the mansion. This was the spot where the bus dropped me off yesterday, so hope this was how it worked. Then suddenly, a scary-looking guy pulled up on the other side of the street and yelled at me. Babe, what are you doing? Get in! Me? I was his babe? Oh, so he was Dylan, my sister's boyfriend. I walked over and reluctantly climbed on the back seat. Hey! What's wrong? Are you still mad at me for letting you go on the field trip alone? Come on, you said it was okay. I didn't know what to say to him, so I stayed quiet and stared out the window. Come on, babe, I mean, this is dumb. We both know how sitting in the back always gives you travel sickness. Gosh, I really needed to say something to shut this guy up, huh? No, it's totally fine between us. Um, it's just that I feel a bit under the weather. I need a little rest, that's all, and it's more spacey here. Well, that seemed to quiet him down, but I kept on catching him giving me odd looks in the rearview mirror. Look at him! Ugh! Gabby and I might be twins, but our tasting guys couldn't be any more different. Dylan looked like the bad boy type. Green hair, a nose ring, and drove some flashy sports car, while I prefer sweet and funny guys, like Jaden. But I didn't want to accidentally ruin my sister's relationship either, so when we got to school, I had to give him a peck on the cheek to make sure that we were cool. Yuck, his cologne stank. Luckily, I met Katie in the parking lot, so I followed her to class. Things were going great, at least they were, until we got to Spanish class. The teacher, Mrs. Harrison, gave me this judgy look right from the moment I walked in. Turns out, Gabby hadn't handed in her homework, and she spent the whole of the last session painting her nails. Mrs. Harrison demanded to check my homework today. Well, of course, I didn't know I had homework. So, in a disappointed voice, she said, Gabby, it's been two years and you still don't know how to conjugate any single verb. Are you proud of that? Suddenly, I heard Katie whisper, but at least she knows how to dress, Mrs. Harrison. Your sweater looks like it should have been thrown out two years ago. Then some of the class giggled. Oh my god, Katie? That was so rude. But luckily, the teacher didn't hear that. I quickly apologized to Mrs. Harrison and told her to just give me a pop quiz to make up for my missing homework. She did. 
and to her, and the whole class's total surprise, I slayed all the questions. After class, I told Katie that her comment about Mrs. Harrison wasn't cool. Laughing, she replied, Jeez, why are you so uptight today? But on seeing my unfaltering expression, she quickly changed the subject. You've still got to help me with the plan, okay? You promised. She winked at me. What? What plan? In confusion, I faked a smile at Katie. Oh, don't you worry, girl. I got it all set. That night, Gabby called me and we updated each other on our first day. Things went better than expected. Apparently, she loved it there, and she felt so warm and connected with mom and dad, and she was sure that they were our real parents. She also enjoyed feeding the chickens and apple picking in the backyard. However, she did almost get me fired from work as she didn't know how to use the oven, but she managed to charm her way out of it. I told her how I'd handled the Dylan situation and made peace with Mrs. Harrison. But, oh, Gabby, Katie did mention to me about some plan? What is it? Oh, uh, yeah, I promised to set her up with Jaden. I guess you'll have to carry it out for me now. My heart sank as I said, Jaden? As in, your brother Jaden? Yeah, now not biologically. It's no wonder I just couldn't get along with him. Not like us, right? I forced a laugh and changed the subject. But, oh no. Jaden was far more suited to me than rebellious Katie. But, okay, this was Gabby's life, so I needed to make sure I didn't mess it up. And maybe, when this twinning truth broke out, I'd get my chance with Jaden. For now, we agreed to continue living each other's lives. I suppose it was pretty easy, seeing as all Gabby seemed to do was hang out with her friends and avoid doing her homework. The only part I didn't like was setting Katie up with Jaden. And that's when things got complicated. Will we ever tell everyone the truth? Or this life swap is too much fun to stop? Stay tuned for part two to find out. Ouch! My head felt like it had been hit with a brick. Um, why was the room so bright? And what were those monotonous beeping sounds? Was this a... hospital? I used up all my strength to pull myself into a sitting position. Then a nurse walked into the room. I... Wh why am I here? I stuttered out in confusion. She smiled over at me and replied, Oh, you're awake. What a miracle. Both you and your baby are fine now. Huh? What on earth was she talking about? My look must have said it all as her smile dropped. Honey, you were in an accident and lost a lot of blood. You've been in a coma for the last month. And as you're pregnant, there was a worry that both of you wouldn't make it. But it's all okay now. What? I've been asleep for a whole month? Concerned, I asked her. My parents, um, where are they? Oh, they're so busy, so they asked us to take care of you, she said as she fluffed out my pillows. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds about right, as my parents were always busy. They hated wasting time, on me especially. <sighs> I put my hand on my swollen stomach and tried to recall the accident, but why couldn't I remember it? Come to think of it, I didn't even remember who the daddy was. A sharp pain shot through my head, so I clutched it with both hands. Then I cried out to the nurse, Why don't I remember anything? Seeing this, the nurse hurried off to find a doctor. Tests were carried out, and guess what? Turns out, I have short-term memory loss. The following days on my sickbed, I had nothing to do but think. Finally, a memory came to me. It was me and my bestie, Cecilia. There was Christmas music playing, and we giggled as we prepared wasabi-covered cookies to trick our friends. Now it's summer already? Ugh! So that meant I'd already graduated. Suddenly, I heard footsteps. It was Cecilia! in the doorway with a huge bouquet of sunflowers. I can't even begin to explain how good it felt to see her. We hugged for like a hundred times, 
Then, unable to contain my patience, I eagerly jumped into the question. Now, please tell me everything. Why was I in an accident? And who's the baby's daddy? I mean, she's my bestie, so if anyone knew anything, I figured it'd be her, right? But to my dismay, she just shook her head. Sorry, Dora. I don't know anything about the accident. But, um, the dad's probably Lewis. I spluttered out in surprise. What? Lewis, as in the Star Wars geek from math class? So, turns out Lewis and I have been in love for a while? She also said she'd been shocked at first when a rebellious girl like me fell for a straight-A student like him. Lewis. Really? Me and Lewis. If so, then why hasn't he visited me? Seeing how dumbfounded I looked, Cecilia continued. Look, I think you should go find Lewis and sort this out. So as soon as I was discharged from the hospital, I went around to Lewis's house. He answered the door and gave me this dirty look. What do you want? We're through, like ages ago. Then he slammed the door in my face. This was confusing and annoying. He's the reason I can't get into my favorite pants. He needs to man up. So I went back to his house the next day, adamant I would have answers. Only his mom answered the door and said he was at college. I drove there and spotted him walking across campus. Fuming, I charged up to him and grabbed his arm. Lewis, if you walk away from me again, I swear I will scream. He looked super uncomfortable, but had no choice but to follow me to a nearby coffee house. At first, the silence was awkward. I just couldn't stop staring at the gross shirt he was wearing. What did I ever see in this guy? But then he spoke up. Talk already. I have an important assignment due tomorrow. I slammed my fists onto the table and yelled out, I'm pregnant, and it's yours. What? Impossible. His eyes popped. Oh, so you think you can just shirk your responsibilities by some words like that? I, um, how many months are you? Well, Lewis, I'm three months pregnant. He let out a sigh of relief. Now that's clear. We broke up four months ago. It's definitely not mine. Must be Kai's. Kai? Who's Kai? I was seriously confused. Had he made up this guy just to get off the hook? This is just typical of you. He snarled at me. Kai is the biker dude you cheated on me with. After that, he gulped back his drink, then growled out. Goodbye, Dora. Then left. Oh boy, this was a lot to take in. Didn't know what to do. I sent Cecilia a message asking if she was free to talk, and the okay message from her arrived within a minute. When I arrived at her house, I saw a man leaving on his bike. So as soon as she answered the door, I winked at her. Who is that guy? Don't tell me he's your new BF. Cecilia gave me a sheepish look. Nah, just an acquaintance. Then she quickly pulled me inside. So, what happened with Lewis? I want to know everything. Dropping myself on the couch, I sighed and told her all about my not-so-pleasant encounter with my ex. Wow, he's such a jerk. Cecilia, do you think I need to go see this Kai? Maybe he's the father. No! She interrupted me. I mean, you barely know the guy. I raised my eyebrow. Do you know him? Cecilia looked like a rabbit caught in headlights. Okay, this was odd. Was she hiding something? I was about to press her for more information when suddenly we heard the door open. Oops, I forgot my phone. A cute guy in bike leathers walked in. Um, was he the guy I'd just seen leaving? Then he gave me this puzzled look. Dora! Huh? Why aren't you in Italy? I must have been giving him a funny look. As he rubbed his head, then continued. How could you just leave without saying a word? I'm sorry, do you know me? He looked puzzled. Huh? What are you saying? It's me, Kai! I froze, and my heart was about to break free from my chest. Kai? You're Kai? The father of my baby? Kai glared at me. What 
baby. What are you talking about? None of this made sense to me either, so I just blurted out, You know, there was an accident, and now I'm suffering from memory loss. I can't remember anything. Well, anything that happened after last Christmas. And, um, yeah, I'm also pregnant. As soon as I finished speaking, Kai turned to look at Cecilia, who was nervously chewing on her nails. Cecilia, why did you tell me the door was studying in Italy? She pleaded out. Kai, please. I just don't want you to be caught up in her mess. You deserve better than this. Than her. What? So Cecilia had been lying to me all along? While she actually knew who the father was? Gosh, what kind of friend is that? I was about to scream at her. Then Kai said, Anyway, Dora, I'm sorry, but the baby can't be mine, as we've only kissed and nothing more. The room started spinning. I rushed outside. I needed some time alone to process this. Honestly, it felt like the whole world was against me. My memory had failed me. My parents didn't care. My best friend had betrayed me. And now I had no recollection of who my baby's father was. What a tragic mess I was. I arrived home in the worst mood possible. But my parents were still too busy on their laptops to notice it. In a cold tone, Mum just said, Have you figured out who's the father yet? I silently shook my head. Dad snorted. God, all you use your head for is a hat rack or what? You got yourself in this, so just go solve it yourself. Ugh, why did they talk as if they ever cared to help me? Please, I've always solved things on my own. Frustrated, I stormed right off to my room. I was sitting by the window, staring out into the void, when my phone beeped. It was Cecilia. Just the thought of her drove me mad, so much that I flung the phone onto the floor without even checking the text. Then came another beep, so I bent down to pick it up, when suddenly I saw something poking out under my bed. It was a lighter with the name Stanley engraved in it. Hang on. Stanley! That did ring some bells. I remember now. Lewis broke up with me four months ago. But not because of Kai. No, it was because he was going to a prestigious college and he thought my carefree attitude would cramp his style. Embracing my new single life, I drove to Key West Island and partied hard for a few days. And that's when I met Stanley at a bar. So he was the father. But now what? I mean, I had no way of contacting him. But even if I could find him, then what? I didn't love him. I didn't even know the guy, and I didn't want to be attached to him just for the baby. <sighs> and when I came back to town, I grew closer to Kai. Only, Cecilia didn't like this, so she confronted me at school and insisted that I'd stolen her man. I rolled my eyes and told her, You're ridiculous. Kai doesn't even like you. He likes me. The next thing I remembered was firm hands pressing against my back, and then I slipped and fell down the stairs. And the rest is history. Ugh, Cecilia was such a heartless monster. Her jealous rage could have killed me and my baby. I patted my belly. Thank God we were both okay. I just needed to figure out what I was going to do now. So after many days of thinking, I decided what I'm going to do. I want to be a single mother. Hey, I know I can do this. There's no way I'll be as bad as my parents are, which is why I'm here looking for some books on parenting. Ugh, why do they put these books so high up? It's so inconsiderate. Right on cue, someone came to my rescue, reached up, and grabbed the book I wanted, then passed it to me. I was about to thank this kind-hearted Samaritan when, hang on, Kai. I put the book down and hurried out of there without saying a word. He shouted after me, but... I didn't look back. I just didn't want to be dragged into this drama between Kai and Cecilia. Being through one coma was enough. The next day, I was scrolling through a baby name site when Mum shouted that there was someone at the door for me. I went downstairs to see Kai, standing there with heavy bags in both hands. He gave a coy look and said, This is for you. And the baby. This made me feel uneasy. I mean, 
I felt so bad for him. Seeing my reaction, he continued. I should have told you how I felt from the beginning, and then things would have been different. I like you. I mean, I really do. I love you, Dora, and I... I want to raise this baby with you. I couldn't believe Kai still loved me. Even when I'm carrying another man's baby, he's willing to welcome this baby with all his heart. In that case, I suppose you better come in. I smiled at him while holding the door open. Okay, so sometimes life likes to throw crazy surprises at you. But hey, they make sure things are more interesting. I'm sure it won't shock you to learn that I don't talk to Cecilia or Louis anymore. Poof, those losers don't deserve me. As for Kai, we now live together, and we can't wait for the baby to arrive. But tough luck, Kai, as there's no way we're calling them Kai Jr. <laughs> It's me again, Ashley. And yep, you guessed it. I was still stuck in this apartment with these annoying kids. That was definitely the weirdest detention ever. None of us had any idea how long we'd be stuck here. Oh well, at least we weren't starving, as every three days a giant bag full of groceries would appear inside the doorway, since we couldn't get out of there. Things had become a little less awkward since the day we'd sat down and opened up to each other. Although, Ned had switched from being a jerk towards Jessica to following her around the place like a lovesick puppy. Take this morning. For instance, he held a slice of toast out to her, which he'd cut into the shape of a heart. She rolled her eyes as she pushed the plate away. Poof! Get real, nerd! I don't like you! He took a bite of the toast, then in between chewing said, You'll soon change your mind. I'm sin 2x and you're cos 2x. So together, we're one. I had to admit, watching Ned try and fail to win Jessica's heart was amusing. But unfortunately, I had my own guy-shaped issue to deal with. Philip. He wasn't winding me up anymore. Instead, he was being nice to me. He even lent me his hoodie after I spilled jam on mine. Um, this nice version of him would take some getting used to. <sighs> Now we just needed Gwen and Stan to become a couple, and things would be even more interesting. <laughs> but they barely look at each other. Lucky them, as Philip was really starting to bug me. Can you believe that he actually sprayed my favorite t-shirt with his aftershave? It stank and made me sneeze. Achoo! So I stormed into the living room where he was telling some lame joke to Ned, chucked my t-shirt at him, then yelled, Stop being weird. It's too much. He just gave me this soppy grin and replied, It's so I'm always on your mind. Ugh, I wasn't in the mood for this, so I returned to my room and sulked there for the rest of the day. Ugh, this apartment was too crazy. I just wanted to go home. My stomach started to rumble, so I reluctantly left the room to grab a snack. What? Jessica was spoon-feeding Philip cereal. Ned was sulking in the corner of the room, and Gwen was mimicking Jessica's actions with Stan, who now had mushed up cereal all over his face. Jeez, Philip thought he was so handsome that he could get any girl he wanted. Well, he sure moved on fast. Fine, I'd show him. I squeezed in between Gwen and Stan and touched his hair. Your hair, Stan. I've never known it is so glossy. I put my hand on my chin and looked at him with adoring eyes. And in my cutest voice, I asked him, Would you like me to make you some French toast? Stan gave me this petrified look and tried squirming away from me. Then Philip and Jessica walked over, and he frowned at me. Come on, Ash. You and the emo? Really? Gwen snorted. Oh, yeah. It's better than a pretty doll and a jock. Oh, wait. Actually, you two are perfect for each other. Stan quietly laughed to himself, then muttered out, Right. Dumb people should be together. Suddenly, Jessica burst into tears. What? Why was she crying? Everyone fell silent and looked at her. Come on, Jess. He was only kidding. 
I awkwardly patted her back. Then she blurted out, I... I've always had a thing for Stan, okay? Huh? Well, none of us were expecting that. Poor Stan looked like he was going to faint with shock. Jessica must have been burying these feelings deep down for so long. She was the most popular girl with a reputation to live up to, after all. Through sobs, Jessica looked at Stan and continued. I knew us being here together was my chance to see if you like me. So, I agreed to Philip's deal to see if you're jealous. Tears streamed down her face. But you just think I'm some dumb pretty doll. She mumbled out an apology to Ned for being insensitive to him, then turned to Stan, sobbed. I'm not a porcelain doll. I have feelings. And left. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. I guess I feel kind of bad for her. And also guilty. But hold up. Philip's deal? Oh, so he pulled that out to make me jealous too? That night, we had another meeting. Yawn. This one was as dull as it sounds. Well, until we started discussing the meaning behind this detention. Hey, since when did detentions go on for this long? It's been two weeks already. Ned looked concerned. We all agreed. We'd learned how to live in some sort of harmony together, but still, we need to go outside. Also, my family would be worrying, right? There's two, I hope. Then the next morning, Philip was trying to de-jam the air vent in the kitchen when he waved us all over. He pointed up at something small with a tiny red light on it. Ned and he took it down. It was a camera. It could be a security camera, Jessica said. My house also has a few inside, in case of intruders or something. Gwen sneered. Duh, your house is a freaking mansion. Here, there's no need for a security cam. We decided to spread out and look for more cameras. In total, we found five, all hidden around the place, including in a plant pot and fixed to a picture frame. It was freaky to think there could be more scattered around the place. Ooh. We gathered in the living room to discuss what to do about this, when suddenly the front door opened and in walked the principal and some other man I'd never seen before. Huh? Who was he? Did this mean we could finally go home? The other man started talking. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin, and you are the participants in my exciting reality show. Your principal here put you all forward for this, as I wanted kids with six varying personalities. Gwen stood up and shouted, What? Is this for real? I added, There's no way my parents would have agreed to this. They did, the principal grinned. They signed the documents. They all think you are at training camp. Kevin added, Keep up the good work, guys. The viewers are loving all this drama and attitude. Jessica screamed out, You can't do this! It isn't right! We'll keep you here for some more time, to see how this project goes. Don't worry, you'll all get scholarships after this. That is, as long as you cooperate. We watched as they took away the cameras we'd found. And, yep, you guessed it, they locked the door behind them. Then we gathered in the spot in the kitchen, which didn't have any cameras in it, and whispered about what we should do next. Ned suggested, I've done my calculations, and if we join all our clothes together, we can climb down from the window. We were about four floors up, so guess this was possible. Under Ned's instruction, we all wet our clothes, before we joined them, as apparently this would make them less likely to tear. I'll go, Philip added. I mean, I'm way stronger than the rest of you, and I'm the fastest so I'll reach the cop station in record time, report those jerks, then send help. So the plan was set, and we all clung onto the end of the clothes rope as Phil climbed down it. It was kinda impressive watching him abseil down the building, and he was like a real-life Spider-Man. When he reached the bottom, we hid the clothes rope in the wardrobe and slid a piece of paper under the apartment door so Philip could find our room again. Now it was a waiting game, we all tried to carry on as normal, as we were aware of the hidden cameras. Suddenly, the door barged open, and in walked the principal, 
Kevin, and four massive dudes. Oh no! Jessica frightenedly whispered. Those men instantly started collecting our stuff. When one of them picked up Gwen's hat, she charged at him. Get off of my stuff, creep! The man grabbed her around the waist with one arm and pulled her across the room. She thrashed, kicked, and screamed. She might have been big, but she's still a teenage girl, so she was no match for him. Jessica, Ned, and I all clustered together, not knowing what to do. Only Stan seemed to keep his quiet and calm. With a grin on his face, Kevin shouted, Well, that wasn't very clever now, was it? So we're moving you somewhere new before you're discovered. Right at that moment, Philip ran into her room, followed by some cops. There they are! It's them! They locked us up in here! The principal straightened his tie, then in a polite tone said, Oh, please, this is a misunderstanding. I'm the principal of Xavier Springs High School, and these are the particularly delinquent students who are all in detention. We're administering a special education program for them. And here's their teacher. He pointed over to Kevin. Liar! I shouted. They just made up excuses to punish us and trap us in here. There's hidden cameras and we're on some reality TV show. Ignore her. She has, um, mental issues. She'll do anything to get out of detention. Then he pointed at Gwen. Look, officer, how could we not have special treatment for an aggressive girl like that? Don't you think? We all shouted and tried to explain, but our words jumbled together. The only one who remained silent was, no surprise, Stan. The cops searched around but found nothing. They thought we were only unruly teens trying to bail on detention. They were about to leave when Stan calmly walked over to them, pulled out one of the cameras we'd found the other day from his pocket, and passed it to them. Then, Stan still without any words, pulled out a vintage recorder, pressed the button, and we all heard the whole conversation about TV shows and the principal's threats. Whoa! Nice work, Stan! The cops instantly arrested them, and we were taken back to our families, who all sobbed with joy on our return. So, what came next? Well, my high school got a new principal, and this one hasn't given me detention. Yet. <laughs> the former principal and Kevin and his whole crew are in serious trouble with the cops. Looks like they might end up in jail. As for the six of us, well, we formed an unbreakable friendship. Philip got a sports scholarship, and I'm super proud of him. He also told his dad how he was feeling, and they sorted things out. Ned finally stood up for himself to his parents, and now they're trying to be more understanding. He also has a girlfriend and just won first prize of the state at physics. The nerd. <laughs> Jessica and Stan are an official couple, and they don't care what other people think of them. They're actually super cute together. But shush, don't tell them I said that. Gwen decided to leave this town and go study at an all-girls boarding school. She just started dating a girl there named Claire. She sounds really happy. We're all glad to hear. So... I guess Miss Tough Cookie has a soft side after all. And me? Well, I went from a lonely and awkward girl to having five unlikely best friends and a wonderful boyfriend. Yep, I'm now with Philip. Guess being in detention wasn't so bad after all. Cheers! You might think it's impossible to be two people at once. Um, yeah, I'm Liana, but I'm also Kai. Confused? Then I suggest you check out part one of my story. In short, my mom fooled everyone, including me, into thinking I'm a boy when actually I'm a girl, so my traditional-minded family wouldn't be lured into giving away my inheritance. Back in the restaurant, and I'd just shown my mom how I wanted to go back to Philly and tell my family the truth. No. She shook her head. You can't. It's not the right time. But mom, why? I don't want to lie anymore. Stay here, and I'll tell your father you're doing a master's degree. Again, with the lies, I'm sick of them. I just want to be me. I let out a frustrated sigh. I know you do, but 
I don't want you losing out on your future. I gave her a quizzing look. Come on, Mom, it wouldn't be that bad. Honey, Diamond is back, and she's adamant to worm her way into the company. Oh, no. This changed things. You see, Diamond's my sassy, ambitious half-sister. My father had her with his mistress. Now Diamond was back from her studies in Australia and eager to claim what she believed was hers. Ugh. Mom continued. She's always snooping around the house and her attitude is awful. It's only a matter of time before she refuses to leave. That's why I told you this was not an appropriate time to come out with the truth. Diamond would take advantage of it and turn everything into a bigger mess. Well, that was that. I had no choice but to stay in Canada. Ugh. On the plus side, at least I could be Liana here. Then one night, I just returned home from a party in my bodycon dress and heavy makeup when my phone buzzed. It was a video call from Mom. Hi, Mom. I popped myself down on my bed. Oh, that diamond is a piece of work. She used my Ralph Lauren trinket dish as an ashtray. Can you believe that? Oh, that's awful. Have you spoken to Dad about it? Right at that moment, I saw my father appear behind Mom, and he asked her if she was talking to Kai. Startled, I immediately took off my wig, wiped my lips onto the back of my hand, pulled off my eyelashes, and wrapped a blanket around me so he couldn't see my dress. I reappeared on screen with a forced smile and lowered my voice to say, Hi, Dad, he coldly asked. Why is your face so dirty? I, I ju just on, oh, n nothing. Your mother and I are to attend an important corporate event this weekend, and I want you to come with us. It will be a good experience for you. Be home by Saturday. When my father demands something, well, then there's absolutely zero point in questioning him about it, so it looks like Kai was going back to Philadelphia. That weekend, I packed my bags and transformed myself back into Kai. Jeez, I'd forgotten how much it sucked having to wear these unflattering clothes. Mom was there to pick me up at the airport. She rushed over to me and gushed. Look at you. My daughter is so handsome. I have to admit that I was really nervous on the way home. By the time the grand house came into view, I felt like I was going to barf. I hadn't been Kai properly in years. What if I messed up and then Dad disowned both me and Mom? Mom must have sensed how I was feeling as she took my hand and led me inside. My father was sitting on the edge of the couch with a black coffee and a ton of paperwork in front of him. Hi, Dad. <clears throat> Mom elbowed me, so I coughed to clear my throat, then in a male voice said, Hi, Dad. Your son is back. Yes. Hello. Dad replied, his attention still on his paperwork. Phew. It seemed that he hadn't noticed my voice mishap. After that, I went up to my room, freshened up and changed into my suit. I sprayed myself with cologne, as smelling like a guy might make me act more like one, right? Later on, my father drove us to the event. He wouldn't stop going on about people he wanted to impress and contracts he was after. So without thinking, I grabbed my mom's purse and pulled out her compact mirror and lipstick. I pouted my lips and was about to put it on when I saw my dad glaring at me in the rearview mirror. Um, it's just lip balm. The flight really dried them out. I licked my lips as I quickly dropped the items back into mom's purse. Mom peered back at me with a be careful look. The event was hard work. Having to be Kai in front of all these big wigs took it out of me. So by the time we arrived home, I was ready to sleep for a week. Daddy, I'm so glad you're back. How was your event? A girl suddenly rushed out of nowhere and wrapped her arms around my father. Oh, hi, Mrs. Wilson. And you must be my half-brother, Kai. Hi, she smirked. This was Diamond, my unruly half-sister. Mom and I both muttered back hellos, but Dad seemed oblivious to the tension between us all. It was rather successful. I believe the Woodward contract will be mine very shortly. Well, seeing as you're here, you must stay for dinner. After dinner, Mom and I went to the kitchen to bring out the desserts, leaving Dad and Diamond alone. But as we headed back to the dining room, we heard Diamond say, Please let me be your assistant. I want to learn more about the family company. Besides, I'm far more business-minded than Kai, so I don't see why I can't be the director one day. Hearing this, Mom cleared her voice. Diamond then startled and turned around to see Mom holding up a plate with a smile. Anyone for fruit? The next day, 
Mom asked me to go on a walk with her around the garden. Through gritted teeth, she said, You heard what that devil diamond said to your father. She's after your position in the company. We can't let her get away with this. Oh no, what did my mother have planned now? I didn't want to play games, I just wanted to be Liana. She continued, You'll have to come back home at once and work in the company. As Kai, of course. No way, I yelled. I followed your selfish rules for twenty years. This is my time now. I'm not doing this. I started to walk away, but Mom pulled on my arm. Darling, I know. She let out a thoughtful sigh. But if you tell the truth now, then your father might disown us, which will allow Diamond to wriggle her way to what is rightfully yours. We can't let this happen. It's unacceptable. I shook free of Mom's grip and stormed off. This time she didn't try to stop me. I needed time to think this all through. I didn't want to be Kai anymore, but I also didn't want us to lose everything. I really hate doing this, but I guess it's not totally unreasonable of Mom having to pull out these desperate measures. I found my mother in the conservatory, staring thoughtfully out of the window. On seeing me, she smiled. Oh, Kai, I... Mom, I'm sorry. I've been childish. I know you only want the best for me. Mom took my hand and replied, No. I'm the one who's been asking too much of you. I've been thinking and perhaps there's a way in which you can be both Kai and Liana. I gave her a questioning look, and she continued, It's bonkers, of course, but it might just work. She chuckled, Kai should get engaged to Liana. What? My mother wanted me to get engaged to myself? But then thinking about it, my mother was an expert at bringing her crazy ideas into fruition. Besides, what did I have to lose? Well, besides my entire family and inheritance. So the next day, while I was having dinner with my parents and grandparents, I stood up and announced, I have something to tell you all. I have a fiancé, Liana. She's smart, beautiful, well-educated, and you're all going to love her. We plan to marry as soon as I finish my master's degree. And I passed around my phone with a Liana picture on it. My grandparents seemed thrilled, and my grandpa said, Ah, oh, yes, it's about time our beloved grandson found himself a wife. I held my breath as the picture reached my father, and he peered down at it with scrutinizing eyes. He looked up at me, and for a horrible moment I thought he'd figured out the truth. But then he said, Good, good, so when will we meet this Liana? Soon, uh, she's just finishing her courses. She's coming over next week. Um, but I still had some paperwork going on at school, so Liana will visit you guys first, and I'll fly home later. That's how excited she is to meet you all. Ah, oh, I can't wait, dear. She seems like a lovely young lady. My grandma looked genuinely happy. Then I continued, Yes, Nanny, she, she is. And in fact, I turned to Dad, Liana is looking for an internship. It would be nice if she could get a spot in our company, as she'll have to learn about our family's business sooner or later, right, Dad? He seemed pleased as he replied, Very well, just bring her over. So Mom's latest crazy plan seemed to be working. After my announcement, I stayed home for a few more days as Kai, and I flew back to Canada, packed my things, and flew back as Liana. Phew, this was exhausting. Walking into the house with all eyes on me was terrifying, but everyone rushed over and greeted me. Even Diamond. Mom linked arms with me. Darling, our house has plenty of guest rooms. You gotta stay here. I insist. We all are family now, aren't we? Please, make yourself at home. Smiling, I replied. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson. That would be lovely. Suddenly, Diamond interrupted. Oh, seeing as this house has that many spare rooms, why can't I have one? Mom looked flustered, then reluctantly replied, Um, sure, Diamond. I have never said that you couldn't. Just pick one. This was not part of the plan, but fine. I ain't scared of her. Mom then led me to my room and kept reminding me to be extra careful now that Diamond was around 24-7. On one occasion, I was reading by the window in our home library when Diamond waltzed in and he yanked the book off me. Oh, I get it. You're only marrying that half-brother of mine for the first edition books, she winked. I took the book back off her, then politely replied, Yes. 
I'll marry whoever I need to if it means getting this 8th edition book published in 2017. Oh, the glamour. Hilarious. She just sneered and walked away to hide the humiliation. Unfortunately, even at work, I didn't get a break from Diamond. Instead, I was assigned a job under her management. Ugh. One time, I returned from lunch to find the report I was working on had vanished from my desk. I pulled my desk apart looking for it, only for her to pass it to me at the end of the day. Then, with this devious grin on her face, she said, You were meant to have this finished today, weren't you? It looks like you're in for a late one. Ugh! She was definitely more of an imitation than a diamond. And as he'd predicted, my father ended up getting the Woodward contract, and it was a huge deal. Some of the representatives from the company were coming in to discuss the project, so everyone seemed to be buzzing around like flies in preparation. Diamond ordered me to make coffee and take it to our guests. I was walking with the tray of drinks when I bumped straight into someone. Oh no, the coffee soaked his white shirt. As I muttered out a sorry... I realized something. I knew this man. He looked really familiar. It was Kevin. My old school friend? He'd changed so much, but it was definitely him. I'd recognize him anywhere. But he didn't seem to recognize me, which I guess wasn't surprising seeing as I was dressed as a girl. Hmm. I wonder what he was doing here. In part one of my story, I met my doppelganger, Tracy, who just so happened to be from a super wealthy, royal blood kind of family. We made a deal, where I became her stunt double to stand in for her at boring royal parties, so she could freely be with the love of her life that her family didn't approve of. It's just like a part-time job, which helped me earn some extra money to pursue my dream of being a singer. But then one time, Tracy came over and asked me to move into her mansion and play this princess act for an entire month while she's off to Asia with her boyfriend. That would need some serious thinking. How was I supposed to keep this up 24-7? I could already see myself getting so busted. Sensing my hesitation, Tracy pleaded again. Please, I'll give you whatever you want. This would mean so much for me and Arnold. You can do it, Kathy. We believe in you. She looked at me with those big puppy eyes. Oh no, what to do? At that exact moment, my mother walked out from the kitchen and said, You've been doing a great job so far, sweetie. I'm sure you'll pull it off this time too. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Well, I couldn't say no now. So I gave Tracy a nod, which made her scream with happiness. Yay! You've made my day! Tomorrow, 3 p.m., I'll be waiting for you. Then she grinned at my mother. Thank you, Mrs. Mill. And so, I moved in the next day. It was just me and Tracy's dad lived in this marvelous mansion. Yeah, as well as their butler and some dozens of housekeepers. You get the picture. Luckily, Tracy's dad was rarely home, so I basically had the place to myself. It was bliss. I didn't have to lift a finger. If I wanted a glass of wine, I just rang the bell and a glass would be waiting before I even put the bell down. One day, I felt like Mexican food and they actually flew one of the top Mexican chefs in just to make me a burrito. I could seriously get used to this whole royal blood thing. However, there were a few moments where I totally messed up. One time, Tracy's dad had a day off, so we ate dinner together. I was so nervous that I totally forgot that Tracy was left-handed, and her dad noticed right away. Sweet pea, since when are you eating with your right hand? I stammered, trying to make something up. Um, I've recently seen some research saying I should start using my right hand to train the left side of my brain too. Just experimenting, dad. Oof, that was close. But it didn't stop there. Doris, the housekeeper, came into my room one day and joked, Tracy, when did you become so tidy? If I didn't know better, I'd say you had been replaced by a secret twin sister or something. I totally froze, trying not to let Doris know that she had just hit the nail on the head. I laughed it off. Oh, Doris, don't be so silly. It's me. Check my birthmark. <laughs> 
I was kind of bored and just thought I could clean it up a little bit. But it's even more boring. Ugh. It's all yours now. I passed her my unfolded blanket and swiftly left the room. Each close call like that reminded me to be more careful. But other than that, my new life was full of wonderful things. Especially when I had Thomas by my side. At first I tried to act as cold as possible towards him, just like how Tracy would normally treat this fiancé of hers. But tell me, how am I supposed to ignore such a perfect man? He often came to visit me or took me to places. He always gave me all these butterflies with his charm and elegant gestures. And it wasn't long before I realized I had feelings for him. I just couldn't help it. He made me so happy. One night, instead of having some fancy eight-course dinner date, I suggested we try something more casual. So we went bowling and grabbed some burgers. We had so much fun. And at one point, he took my hand and said, Thank you for opening your heart to me and giving me a chance to be your man. As he put a soda can ring on my finger. Come on, who wouldn't melt to that? And when he dropped me home, he leaned over to kiss me. Oh my god! My heart was thumping in my chest as I got out of the car. Then he said, Good night, my darling Tracy. Suddenly, reality came crashing down. I had been delusional. It was Tracy that Thomas loved. Not me. Not poor old Kathy. But it's too late now. I'd been so carried away with my own feelings that I didn't realize how my behaviors towards Thomas had been taken as a green light. Both families were super stoked that Tracy finally showed some positive signals towards this relationship, and they started planning the wedding right away. The date was set for two weeks later. Then the plan was for us to move to Singapore for Thomas's work. I was so shocked at how fast everything was moving. This was a disaster. I called Tracy and told her everything. She also freaked out and told me to stay calm and just wait for her. She'd get back before the wedding day to stop it. Well, the wedding day was fast approaching and there was still no sign of Tracy. I was really panicking now. And the worst part was that I couldn't get a hold of her. Her phone was off. I didn't know what to do. I cried to my mom over the phone, so she tried to calm me down. Honey, I think if you leave now, you'll mess everything up. If Tracy's family finds out, you'll both be in trouble. Hang on a bit more. I'm sure she'll be back and everything will be okay. But that means I have to go through with the wedding and then move to Singapore with him. I can't do that, Mom! Why not, sweetie? I know you love him. And so far, no one has spotted a difference between the two of you. Just keep pretending for now, okay? So that's what I did. I kept pretending. While everyone prepared for the wedding of the year, I paced back and forth waiting for Tracy to get back. One day, I was out in the garden, trying to ease my mind, when someone approached me. He looked so familiar, and I wondered if it was Arnold, Tracy's boyfriend. But what was he doing here? He asked me to follow him so that no one would see us. And then he seemed angry and said, Tracy, why didn't you tell me you were back? I was so worried when you disappeared like that. Huh? Wasn't Tracy supposed to be with him? Arnold, calm down. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. But Tracy has disappeared? I haven't been able to contact her either, and I've been worried sick. Oh, hey, Kathy. Gosh, you two are identical. Arnold looked disappointed. Anyway, we came back a few days ago, and she wanted to swing by your mum's place to give us some presents. Then I haven't seen her since. That's weird. My mum would have mentioned if she swung by. Yeah, I've asked her, but she hadn't seen Tracy either. Kathy, we need to find her. So I immediately cancelled my wedding dress fitting and went with Arnold to my house. Hey, Mom, it's me! I called out, but there was no answer. We searched the house, but couldn't find her anywhere. Then, as we passed my room, I could hear someone inside, and the door was locked. That was so odd. So I rushed to get the spare key to open it, and got the fright of my life. Tracy was sitting on my bed! I almost screamed! What are you doing here? 
Tracy looked as shocked to see us as we were to see her. I don't know why your mom locked me in here, but don't worry. She didn't hurt me. I'm being fed well and I have Netflix, so it's not all bad. No way. My mom would never do such things. She was the sweetest woman, and this was so out of character. Then I heard footsteps on the stairs. It was my mom. I screamed. Mom, could you please explain? What's going on here? She looked at me and stammered. I, I just plan to keep her here for a few days. Just until you married Thomas and flown to Singapore with him. Are you insane? Do you want me to steal her life? No, sweetie, it's not stealing. It should have been your life. I mean, why didn't he recognize his own daughter? At this, she burst into tears and fell to the floor. Arnold rushed over and helped her up and said, What do you mean, his own daughter? And that's when my mom told me that Tracy is actually my half-sister. What? So Tracy's dad was my dad too? Turns out, when my mom had fallen pregnant with me, Tracy's dad's family hadn't approved because my mom was just a normal person. So they'd paid her to move to another city and stay away from dad. But what's even worse is that my dad didn't even try and look for us after that. In fact, a few months later, he'd already married Tracy's mom who came from a rich family. Both Tracy and I stood there completely shocked. No wonder we looked so similar. So, you're my sister? I gasped, staring at Tracy with wide eyes. Really? Dad did that? What a selfish, arrogant man! I'm ashamed to even be related to him! I'm going to give him a piece of my mind! The truth needs to be told! No, Tracy, wait! Don't do that! My mom yelled. Sorry, but I have to! I can't play this game anymore! I have a plan! At that, Tracy walked off and Arnold ran after her. Here we go, I thought. And eventually, the wedding day of Thomas and Tracy rolled around. Me, my mom, and Arnold showed up in disguise. When the vicar asked them both to say I do, Thomas said it immediately. But Tracy paused. The whole church held their breath waiting for her I do, but it never came. Instead, she said, I can't do this, Thomas. I'm sorry. That's when Arnold appeared, and Tracy ran towards him and held his hand. This man, he is the true love of my life. Of course, Tracy's dad was furious. He got up from his seat and yelled in front of everyone, What on earth is going on? And that's the moment when I felt so proud of Tracy. She said, I don't love Thomas, Dad, and he deserves to be with someone who truly loves him back. That's what marriage is about, right? It should be based on love, not status or money. And anyway, I don't want to hurt someone the way you did. What are you talking about? Who did I hurt? He looked stunned. Um, my mom, Kathy's mom, and Kathy herself, too. Tracy pointed over at me and my mom. Everyone in the church gasped as they looked from Tracy to me and back again. We really were identical. He looked like he was going to faint when he saw my mom. And then with a shaking hand, he pointed to me and said, And who is this? My mom walked towards him and said, This is Kathy, your daughter, the one you abandoned. Wow, I didn't think my mom had it in her. Honestly, the tension in the air was crazy. People started whispering and shuffling in their seats. That was when Thomas said, So, which one of you is Tracy? I decided this was my moment to speak up. I'm not Tracy. I'm Kathy. I've been taking her place during the past month. I'm so sorry for lying to you this whole time. I couldn't even look him in the eyes, as I put in his hand the soda ring that meant so much to me. Thomas looked disappointed and marched off. I ran after, trying to stop him, but he didn't care. Only, when I tripped and fell to the ground, he turned around to say, Why would you do this? Giving me false hope? And for what? Honestly, 
It would have been better if you'd treated me the way Tracy the Ice Queen does. I'm sorry, Thomas. I didn't want to hurt you. My feelings for you are real. I started to cry. You're so selfish, Tracy. Oh no, wait. I mean, Kathy. Then he walked off. In the end, the wedding was obviously cancelled. Tracy's dad, or should I say, our dad, had no choice but to accept Tracy and Arnold's relationship. I was so happy for her. Dad, of course, also apologized to me and Mum, and even offered me to come and live with them. But I refused. I wasn't about to leave my mom. However, I did accept his offer to pay for my vocal training. At least, I could live this dream of mine. Because I doubted I could make my other dream come true. My dream to see Thomas again. I was heartbroken. Still, I had to get on with life. Maybe I'd meet someone else. Pretty soon, it was time to graduate from my first semester of vocal training and I was going to have my first ever solo performance to an audience. I was so nervous, but I sang with all my heart. And afterwards, as I left the theater, someone ran up to me with a giant bouquet of flowers. Unbelievable! It was Thomas! I burst into tears and he said, Hi, Kathy. I'm Thomas. Nice to meet you. That put the widest smile on my face. I then ran into his arms saying, it feels so good to hear you call me by my real name. Yes, I'm Kathy. I know we just met, but will you be my boyfriend? And you guessed it. The rest is now history. We are currently planning our wedding. For real this time. And I've honestly never been happier. Hey, been trying to find you at school today. I have big news. And it's bad. Real bad. Don't leave me hanging. Mom says we're defo moving to California by the end of the month. What? No way. That's a two-day drive from here. Yeah, I know. <sighs> but Mom's marrying David. The same David that's scared of spiders, cockroaches, and everything? Yeah, that guy. He's been trying to get her attention for ages. Sending her flowers, playing the guitar on her porch. Then last week, he even climbed up the oak tree so he could hand her flowers through the bedroom window. Okay, that's kind of creepy. Ew. Tell me about it. But you know, the worst part is, I have to transfer to another school. No, no, no. Lisa couldn't move away. Who would I sit with at lunch? Who would I watch corny movies with? Ugh, we've been besties for years. We couldn't just be separated like this. No one would ever understand me like she did. We were like two halves of a whole. Her dad had passed away, so she only had her mom, while I only had my dad. And yep, that's my amazing dad. It's been just me and him for the past 10 years. I still remember that afternoon when my mom took her suitcase and left with another man. After that, me and dad moved back here, to our hometown, New Hampshire. It's only when I got a little older that I found out mom and her lover scammed dad out of everything. So dad's been working his butt off to open his own repair garage to provide for us both ever since. It isn't fair. My dad's a hero, and he deserves to be with a better woman. Hold on. Yes, he deserves a better one. And who wouldn't be better than Lisa's mom? I needed to tell Lisa about my plan right now, so I immediately ran to my room and phoned her. Girl, I have the most genius plan ever to keep you and your mom here with me. Please, I'm all ears. Anything. I really don't want to move to Cali. Okay, listen. Let's set your mom up with my dad. He's a good guy, and that means we'll be sisters. We both squealed excitedly. Lisa always wanted to have a dad. A nice one, not that David creep. Ugh, I could see the envy in her eyes when I spoke about the funny pranks I played on my dad. Well, in contrast, my heart ached whenever she told me about the girly pamper days she had with her mom. <sighs> okay, first, research is important. We spent all night looking up their horoscopes, name astrology calculator, and even physiognomy. Whoa. 
they're a 98% match. But hey, nothing is perfect, right? Me and Lisa would make up for the missing 2%. The next day, we were both zombies due to the lack of sleep. But at least a proper plan had been set. I told Lisa to tell her mom, Mary, to come around on Saturday for my birthday. Um, yeah, it's not actually my birthday. But she's a presenter for a big news channel, so she's super busy. We needed to make up some special occasion so she couldn't say no. Then I told my dad to prepare his signature dish to welcome my special guests. There's no way Mary could resist. That day, I was helping dad with the ingredients when I heard the doorbell. I opened the door to see Lisa standing there with a pink frosted birthday cake. And by her side was her mom. Happy birthday, sweetie. This one's for you. Oh, something smells good. Hmm, and so familiar. She continued. Hello? Mary? Jack? Why are you here? For Aaron's birthday. And you? I'm her father. And FYI, today isn't her birthday. Yeah, jerk. Mary said under her breath while rolling her eyes. Excuse me? You dumped me for no reason, so what's that attitude? Oh, really? For no reason? My eyes darted from Dad to Mary. Huh? Why were they yelling at each other? This was very confusing, but I could guess that they used to date. OMG, what a small world. Okay, whatever, because it's lunchtime now. And wow, Dad's legendary meatloaf smelled amazeballs. We sat down. And Mary glared at Dad as she took a bite of food. Then she blurted out, Oh, wow. I guess some things never change, huh? Your food is still super salty. Oh, really? But as I recall, someone still asked for seconds. Unbelievable. Excuse me, but do you know each other? Lisa innocently interrupted. There was an awkward silence. Then Dad said, Yeah, we do. But this is the first time I've seen Mary since we broke up, right after I visited her studio for the first time. Mary looked flustered as she replied, Lisa, you shouldn't have tricked me into coming here. Finish your food, then we're leaving. On hearing this, Dad ordered Lisa and me up to my room so he could talk to Mary in private. Only, we hid behind the couch and listened in. Turns out, on that day... Mary took my dad to the studio to watch her first filming as a news presenter. After that, she'd passed by the waiting room and overheard dad talking to someone. I clearly heard that person ask you how I looked, and you said I was still the same old Mary. Do you have any idea that I spent two hours in makeup and was excited to show you? Dad tried to chime in, but Mary wouldn't give him a sec. We're still... Later, you even told them you were over the moon I wouldn't be your girlfriend for much longer. Thus, to intercept that, I had to break up with you first. Oh, my. So my dad was a playboy or something? Lisa and I swapped confused looks, then continued watching the show. My dad was dumbfounded, and then he said in a helpless voice, Oh, Mary, things were not like that. I said that you look the same because you're always as beautiful as the day I met you. And about the other thing... Yeah? Um, I prepared a ring to propose to you so you'd no longer be my girlfriend, but my wife. What? So they broke up because of an absurd misunderstanding and lost contact since then. Jeez, I thought adults were meant to know what they were doing. It sure didn't seem like it at times. Mary gave Dad an awkward smile, and they said that they could be friends. Then she told him about David and how she was marrying him on the 22nd of December. No! We couldn't let this happen. There had to be another way of getting them together. But that road was full of thorns and spikes, especially when Dad dropped a bombshell. His new girlfriend, Lucy! A few days later, when I was working on my art project, Dad walked into the room with her. Excuse me? She was wearing this super tight bodycon dress and had at least seven layers of makeup on. Ugh. Then she even dared to pick up the photo of me with Mom and smirked. Oh, how nice. I rushed over to her, snatched it out of her hands and shouted, Keep off my things! 
I don't like you. She immediately glared at me. But then seeing Dad coming down from upstairs, she suddenly smiled and hugged me while whispering in my ear, You don't, but you have to. Jeez, what a poisonous snake. But worse, when she left, Dad had this dumb grin on his face, and then he actually asked if I wanted her to be my new mom. Oh no, she'd hypnotized him for sure. In a rush, I called Lisa to tell her about it. She came up with the idea of asking her mom to join us at the Christmas market this week. Bummer. She refused. Apparently she had too much wedding planning to do. Ugh. And if you're thinking it couldn't get worse, then Dad invited Lucy along. So, Lisa asked her mom to let her stay with me for a few days, so we could teach this Lucy some lessons. May the pranking commence. That morning, Lucy showed up in this fancy light blue dress and ordered Dad to get her a chocolate-covered waffle. What a shame. I accidentally knocked it all over her outfit. Oops! Then a fake fly somehow fell into her hot chocolate. Her eyes almost bulged out of her head when she drank that. <laughs> but she just gave us a cunning smirk, then grabbed Dad's arm and cuddled close to him. Unbelievable! But you know... Diamond cuts diamond. When Dad went to the restroom, with sparkling eyes, I said, Lucy, I really admire a nice person like you. My dad's only a mechanic with $1,500 a month, but you still love him. Um, so this isn't true. He ran his own business. But anyway... No way! He looks rich, though. Oh, he probably was just desperate to catch your attention. He bragged a little bit. And you're proud of that? That's not funny, sweetie. I am out of your dad's league. There's no way I'm putting up with a brat like you for such a poor man. Right at that moment, my dad returned and, no surprises, they broke up. Now she was out of the picture, dad was free to win Mary over, right? We three went home, and I noticed that dad was acting weird. He kept on pacing by the door. Then, when Mary arrived to pick Lisa up, he leapt to open it and blurted out to her, Have you thought any more about... us? She didn't say anything, but I noticed them exchanging these sorry looks. Their love for each other was so obviously real, as they knew each other since they had nothing. <sighs> Yet they weren't doing anything about it. It was already December 20th, meaning there were only two days left till the wedding day. I couldn't let our plan fail like this. I immediately grabbed my phone to call Lisa, but the ringing was next to me. She left her phone at my house. Dang! Then the next morning, I walked by her house to go to school as usual, but no one was home, and she wasn't at school either. Oh my, had they moved to David's already? I told Dad this right away when I got home. He thought for a second and asked me to get in the car ASAP to go to California. So our bumper two-day road trip began. When we reached the wedding venue, it was empty. Oh no, we were too late. Dad looked devastated. So I put my arm around him and started to lead him out of there. But then the receptionist appeared and said, Oh, didn't they let you know either? The wedding's been cancelled. Dad's face lit up, and we both raced over to the car and started the long drive back. Oh, it felt like ages in the car, and now it was just two hours until Christmas Eve. The roads were full of beautiful Christmas decorations. I looked through the windows and saw people gathering with their families, while Dad and I were driving nonstop. How sad. We drove straight to Lisa and Mary's, but they were out so we sat in the freezing cold on their doorstep and waited. Dad dozed off, his head resting on my shoulder. Bless. Then I saw them walking towards us. Oh man, you should have seen their shocked faces. <laughs> I shook Dad awake and he looked over at Mary. She dropped her bags and looked at us astonished. Then Lisa told us the whole story. Turns out, on the way to California, they met two amateur robbers who forced them to get out of the car. Mary immediately pounded them with her handbag, while David ran off and hid behind a tree. With Lisa! 
When the robbers scampered off, Mary told David everything from the bottom of her heart. That although David was wealthy, that was not what she wanted. Instead, she just needed a man who could support and protect her. She'd been flattered by his gestures of love, touched by his persistence, and thought that love could be cultivated. But things weren't as simple as that. So they broke up, and the wedding was canceled. Dad and I were stunned. Then, with eyes prickled with tears, my dad said, Mary, I'm sorry for letting you go, but it's not too late, is it? Right after, he pulled the old ring from that day out of his pocket and got down on one knee and said, Mary, will you marry me? She cried out, Yes! Both Lisa and I were bursting with happiness. So now we both have a mom and a dad, and we're pretty much sisters. Yay! This is the warmest Christmas ever.